Hey guys, it's Buff Q. Today I'm going to show you guys what I do when I buy a new pocket knife. I've got two or three little things I like to do to any of my new knives just to kind of make them more mine. The very first thing I'm going to do is do a quick engraving on this knife. This is a brand new Victorinox Spartan. I was going to do a video just on the knife and I thought, well, I'll kind of make this a, a two-in-one in that I'll give you a quick look at the knife when I'm done. A lot of you guys are already familiar. It's like I said, it's a Victorinox Spartan, been around for a long time now. But I thought you might find it more interesting what I do to customize my knives to kind of make them mine. It's it's kind of become probably my favorite part of buying a new knife. Um, just for the fact that this for me is relaxing. What you're getting ready to, to see me do is relaxing. Um, I like to take my time and, and it's kind of like zen for me. <laughs> it's just something I enjoy. So I thought maybe you guys would enjoy watching the process. First thing we're going to do is we're going to do an engraving on the main blade. I do use just a standard Dremel tool for this with a um, diamond tip. Uh, if I can get that to focus for you. There we are. So that's just a diamond tipped engraving piece on the end of a Dremel tool. So we'll do a quick engraving on one side of the blade. Usually I do my YouTube channel name on one side of the blade, and then I'll do my initials on another part of the blade. So here we go. Okay, so there we have the channel name engraved. And yeah, I just lock it down onto the desk here with standard scotch tape. Doesn't need to be anything too strong. Just something to keep the blade from bouncing around when you're doing your engraving. <clears throat> so already, see if I can get that to focus for you guys. There you are. So like I said, we'll do the channel name on one side, and then generally on one of the other blades, I'll do my initials. If you've ever thought about doing this, um, but you've been too nervous for the simple fact of, you know, you might mess up, you can always try doing this on a cheaper knife, or it doesn't even have to be a knife. I know I got the idea, as many of you will guess, from Nothing Fancy, uh, after watching a lot of his vids, and I'd see that he had knives that he engraved himself. I just thought that was neat. I thought that that adds a kind of a, as he would call it, a second kind of cool, just because it makes you, the owner, a little more, I don't know, proud of that item. The more you do it, the more you practice, of course, the better you'll get. Um, that should be good. Yeah, it feels good and sturdy. I have plenty of knives that when I first started doing this, um, they look terrible. <laughs> Over time, I've gotten a little bit better. All right, so on this side, I'll do initials.
when I'm using the engraver, <clears throat> you're not really having to press down. I found that the harder you press down, the more it'll jump around. If you just kind of let the, the gravity help you, just kind of the weight of the tool itself, um, let that do the work and usually it, it does a fine job. So there we have, there's initials. And on the other side, <clears throat> the main blade. I'm trying to get to focus for you guys, the it being a satin finished blade and it's so reflective, it's hard to see it really well. Anyway, so there you have, oh, there we are. That shows up good. Cool. So that's got our engraving done. So the next part of this, I'm gonna move you guys over here. I'll give you a quick look at kind of my kit here. This is where I keep all my stuff just to do the work on these knives. So I've got my Spyderco Sharp Maker here. These are all the extra tools and bits and things that I have for the engraver. Um, grinding wheels, just all that kinds of different stuff. Not that I would use a grinding wheel for any of this, but just a lot of different stuff like that in here. Um, this is an oil that I use that's safe to use for pocket knives. It's actually um, the same oil that you use in a sewing machine. That's what that is. Uh, Non-corrosive, works really well. Of course, some goo on here just for getting off if you've got stickers or anything like that, uh, or any kind of uh, residue on the blade that you want to get off. Um, never leave that as the last thing you used on your blade. So if you use goo on on the blade, after you've wiped whatever off, give it a quick pass of a little bit of light oil and that'll take care of it. Then down here in the zipper pouch, I have some things like Loctite, um, extra heads for the Torx driver here, things like that. Up here, paracord. So just kind of all the all the standard stuff. I hope somebody will find this video interesting. I'm, I'm having a good time doing this. I thought some of you might enjoy it. A lot of guys will think this is just a lot of talking for not a whole lot of result, and I get that. So the next thing we'll do is we'll give it a quick pass on the Sharp Maker. I've not showed this in a video yet, but I will say I've been using the Sharp Maker system for about the last year, and it is, it's just, it's great. It's absolutely fantastic. I knew nothing about sharpening knives when I bought it, and the more I have used it, sorry, I'm just getting the stones out here, guys. The more I have used it, the more I have fallen in love with it. If you don't know anything about how to sharpen a pocket knife, this thing can make you look really good because no previous expertise um, is required. So real quick, Spyderco Sharp Maker, um, you've got a set of four stones total. Um, you've got two coarse stones. Well, they're two, actually, they're medium, two medium stones. And then you've got two that are fine. So you got medium stones, fine stones. You start on the corners, then you work on the flat surface, and then back to a corner, then back to flat. So you go gray, corner, gray, flat, white corner, white flat. Okay, that's the sequence you use. For for knives like this from Victorinox that already come extremely sharp, um, we're just doing kind of a, um, I don't know what you call it, just to make sure it's got a really nice honed edge. We're not even gonna use the medium stones. Um, and actually, I'm not even gonna use the corner of the white stone. I'm just gonna use the very last step, which will be the flat side of the white stone. This is what really gives you um, the, a razor edge. Back the camera out just a little bit. Do about um, about 20. I'm gonna have to adjust this so you guys can see what's going on here. There we are. So back and forth, back and forth. Um, about 20 on each surface that you choose to do is about what it takes. So if you have a knife that's even completely dulled out, uh, edges rolled, anything like that, if you start on the corner of the gray and 20, 20, 20, 20, um, you will have a razor-like finish by the time you're done. So the main thing here with the Spyderco Sharp Maker that you can't really see with the angle that I'm doing here is you just have to make sure that you hold the knife perfectly straight when you're going from um, heel to tip on the blade. So that's the only thing you've got to make sure that you do really well. Don't apply too much pressure and make sure you keep the knife good and straight. Heel to tip. 
over and over. You will start to see a little bit of steel build up on the stones. Okay, obviously that is steel that you're taking off. But with a brand new knife like this, especially from Victorinox, who they already come plenty sharp, I think doing this is plenty. No need to, certainly no need to start with either part of the gray stones, and I don't think there's any need to start with the corner of the white stone either. I think just this last step is really all it needs. I've already lost count. I'm sure you guys could probably keep up. I'm going to say this is 12. Do make sure when you're using this, you do use the safety guides. These little brass rods. They will save your bacon. I've always kept mine on and a couple of times had the knife slip off the, the stone and the rod has saved me. All right, it's close to 20. That might be a few over or a few under. Anyway, so <clears throat> a few quick passes on the sharp maker. Yeah, that's already extremely, extremely sharp. Let's do a quick cut test here. Um, let me find some kind of media. Uh, we'll just use, let's use a post-it note. Let's slide this out of the way here. So if you can cut radius, curves like that, you know that you've got a consistently sharp blade. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. Excellent. Generally, I would also, I'll zoom back in here, I would also do the smaller blade as well, the one that we engraved uh, the initials on. Just for the sake of moving on, <clears throat> I'll do that one a little bit later. So the next thing I would do is add just a quick, simple little lanyard. And I have over here in this box, I've got a couple of new uh, types of lanyard I picked up. I'm gonna do this, I've got this yellow one here that's feels, it's not paracord. Uh, obviously it's too small to be paracord. I think this is just like one mil, uh, one mil. We're going to use this though. So a lot of different paracord, um, lanyard types you can do. I'm going to show you guys what I've been doing most frequently. About that much I'd say would do it. And again, you guys are just watching literally what I do with pretty much every single knife, usually before I do a review on it. This one I just decided, well, I'll just show you the, show you the process. So, come through here. Pull it through. here I don't know what where you guys live and what your weather is today we had a lot of snow yesterday we had a lot of snow I need to move that knot up and that it, uh, it resulted in me actually getting a, a day off work 
So I thought, well, this is a good day to come out do one of these little videos. Generally, I like the the knot here to be no longer than the knife itself. Sorry, it's taking me so long. This is this is not how I'm normally sitting when I do this little lanyard. So I'm trying to sort of look through the camera and at the same time make sure that you guys can see what's going on. Okay. Yeah, that's about where I like it. Yeah. Cool. All right. Address that. Get that good and snug. Then all we do is cut off the extra. That right chair. Snip. And then we'll melt the end of that. Just so that it's not able to work its way back down through the knot, can't come untied, or at least makes it a lot more difficult for that to happen. There we go. Give that a few few seconds to dry. Well, you want to talk about something painful. If you've ever been melting paracord or any kind of nylon rope or anything like that, and, and that hot, uh, that hot waxy stuff has dropped on you, yeah, that hurts. That hurts a lot. And it sticks right to your skin. Yep. That'll be a quick blister. All right, so that's already cooled off quite a bit. Cool. So that's that's pretty much it, guys. There we have it. So that's how I've kind of customized my knives. Again, Victorinox Spartan. Um, great blade. Been around a long time. So you've got can opener, bottle opener, wire stripper, two flatheads, one large, one small. Of course, you got your main blade. This time you guys got to see the process of how I engrave those. Additional blade, this is a smaller one. Did our initials on that one. Key ring with lanyard, back over here on this side. This is specifically why I like the Spartan model. Let me close these down so there's not as much tension on that. I like the Spartan model because it comes with the corkscrew. No, I don't really love or need a corkscrew, but I love having this little micro screwdriver. Um, I really like that. So this gives it a thing to ride in. And then, of course, here you have the awl. Victorinox Spartan, engraved, honed an edge, added the lanyard. That's just what I do. Let me know what you guys think. We'll see you next time.